Stromboli, one of the volcanic islands of the Aeolian archipelago in southern Italy, is famous because of its persistent Strombolian activity. This relatively quiet activity is sometimes broken by lava flows and or by violent explosions. Effusive and explosive activity can occur during the same eruptive phase, as for example during the 2002-2003 eruption. The 2002-2003 eruption started on December the 28th and lasted seven months. At the beginning of the eruption, effusive vents opening on the Shara del Fuoco triggered a landslide responsible in turn of a tsunami that hit the northern part of the island and reached even the southern coast of the Tyrrhenian Sea. The Istituto Nazionale di Geofisica e Vulcanologia performs routine monitoring of the Stromboli volcanic activity by using geochemical, geodetic and seismological networks. Since the 2002-2003 eruptive crises, the INGV improved the monitoring network on the island and installed there an acquisition center which operates during the crisis. While during the persistent Strombolian activity, all the data collected by the monitoring network are transferred in real time to the acquisition centers of Napoli and Catania. There, INGV researchers elaborate the data and communicate to the civil protection any anomaly in the activity. The civil protection on the basis of the information received from the INGV and in cooperation with local administrations, evaluate the risk and take care of the risk mitigation procedures. On February the 27th at 10.30 a.m. local time, the seismic network recorded an anomalous increase of the seismicity, interpreted as landslides on the Shara del Fuoco. The acquisition center of Napoli informed the civil protection. About three hours later, the video camera located on the summit area recorded effusive activity from the northeast crater. Later in the same day, the seismic network recorded signals suggesting a dike intrusion. At about 7.30 p.m. local time, a dike reached the surface and a vent opened at 400 meters of altitude on the Shara del Fuoco. While the effusive activity was starting, the Strombolian activity on the summit craters stopped. The seismic network, however, was still recording signals usually associated to the Strombolian activity. But the seismic events were localized about 200 meters deeper. The days after the starting of the effusive activity, cloudy weather prevented the survey of the summit area. It was, however, possible to observe the Shara del Fuoco slope estimate an effusion rate of 20 meters per second. This high effusion rate led to the formation of a delta that modified the seashore line. On March the 2nd, the coastline was located about 80 meters further. In order to better support the civil protection activities, the INGV activated the acquisition center located on the island. On March the 3rd, when good weather permitted the survey, the morphology of the summit area appeared totally different. The vents collapsed and the whole area was completely covered by red, ash-sized material. On March the 4th, a significant decrease of the effusion rate was recorded.
as from March the 6th on the summit area, new fractures and new collapses occurred. As a consequence, the morphology of the summit area changed again significantly. From the beginning of March, the monitoring network recorded hybrid seismic events. These hybrid events occurred at a very high rate, up to 70 per hour. The geochemical network, moreover, was recording important increase of CO2 and SO2 fluxes in the plume, CO2 concentration in groundwaters, and increase of the soil temperature in the summit area. Nevertheless, only minor variations in the GPS position were recorded. The anomalous signals recorded since the beginning of March alerted the INGV volcanologists, above all because some of them were comparable with those recorded before the paroxysm of April 2003. Therefore, the INGV team interrupted any survey activities involving people close to the summit area. On March the 8th, the lava emission ended and new fractures formed on the northern rim of the northeast crater. The area at the base of the crater itself appeared modified because of northeast-southwest fractures defining a Graben structure. At the base of the slope, there were additional perpendicular fractures. On March the 9th at 4 a.m. local time, from the vent located at 400 meters along the Shara del Fuoco, a new lava emission was observed. A few hours later, a new vent opened at 500 meters of altitude. However, from this vent, the emission of lava lasted only one day. On March the 13th, the INGV volcanologists observed new fractures and soil deformations on the crater area. The day after, a decrease of the effusion rate was recorded. March the 15th at 9.37 p.m. local time, the monitoring network recorded a paroxystic explosion from the northeast crater. The explosion destroyed the infrared camera and other monitoring instruments positioned on the summit area. During the paroxysm were erupted scoriae, pumices and lithic bombs that falling down triggered fires. For six minutes before the explosion, the strain meters were recording anomalous signals. The seismic signals recorded later were comparable in shape and frequency to the anomalous signal recorded during the paroxysm of April 2003. Their amplitudes, however, indicated a lower magnitude. Before the explosion, the CO2-SO2 ratio in the plume changed, while no soil deformations were recorded. Even if this event was less violent than the 2003 paroxysms, this time scoria and lithic bombs impacted the volcano slopes at a lower elevation, very close or even on the road newly built after the 2003 event, up to this point considered safe for inhabitants and tourists. Ash-sized material reached the southern side of the island and fell down on the village of Ginostra. The INGV volcanologists, by overflighting the summit area, observed the occurrence of flow deposits at the base of the northeast crater. On March the 20th, the seismic network recorded an anomalous sequence characterized by hybrid events up to 400 per hour. 
During the next days, a significant decrease of the effusion rate was observed, and indeed the lava flow front was not reaching the sea anymore. On April the 2nd, the lava flow stopped. New fractures formed on the delta. In order to have under control the evolution of fractures and deformations along the Shara del Fuoco, the INGV researchers enhanced the automatic topographic network. Meanwhile, a progressive increase of ash emissions associated with very long period seismic signals was observed. Ash emissions that rarely occurred during the effusive activity were very frequent in this period, above all from the northeast crater. The survey of the summit area revealed the presence of a few millimeters thick ash-sized deposit, made up essentially of lithics. The seismic signals associated to the ash emissions, however, were still located deeper than the signals usually associated to the Strombolian explosions. From April the 16th, a decrease of the ash emissions and of the degassing was observed. The geochemical network recorded a decrease in the CO2 and SO2 fluxes in the plume and a decrease of the CO2 concentration in ground waters. From April the 20th, an increase of the crater temperature was observed and from the 26th, ash emissions occurred again. These new emissions were associated to a different seismic activity. The seismic network indeed was recording a significant increase in the number of the very long period events, although characterized by lower amplitude. The position of the source was also changing. By the end of April, supported by the civil protection, the INGV researchers replaced the geochemical and seismic instruments destroyed during the paroxysm of March the 15th. From the beginning of May, ash and lithic explosions were observed. Nevertheless, all the recorded signals were indicating that Stromboli was slowly going back to its normal activity.